Do you find yourself running out of time to accomplish your work? Are you spending time doing things that you're not that good at? There are effective ways to outsource these tasks so you can focus on your business. This is the Virtual Success Show. We bring the inside scoop on outsourcing success for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. And now, here are your hosts, Matt Maloof and Barbara Turley. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Virtual Success Show. I'm joined again, as always, by my co-host, Matt Maloof. Matt, how are you? I'm well, Bob. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Great. Enjoying this uh, little cooler weather we're having in Sydney now, which is very nice. I love this time of year. I know, but it's beautiful blue skies today. We've had a lot of rain over the last uh, last few weeks. I know. So, so very very enjoyable. Um, so listen, on today's show, everyone, we thought a really interesting thing that I've wanted to delve into on this show for quite a while, actually, because we, we get quite a lot of customers coming to Virtual Angel Hub with this exact um, question. So they'll sort of hit up our Facebook page or our live chat asking, um, look, I only need five hours uh, or so a week with a VA. Uh, you have a minimum of 20 hours a week. Is there anything you can do for me? And what I find interesting about this question is that for me, five hours a week, having worked with a lot of virtual teams and in various different businesses, five hours is actually not very much. And obviously some smaller businesses will think, I only need that much time. And my feeling is that, well, I know that within a few weeks of joining Virtual Angel Hub, so many people who thought they would never fill 20 hours can't believe how quickly it got filled up when we actually helped them to sort of see what else they could be doing. But Matt, from your perspective, I know that coaching businesses, I'm sure you've got a lot of insight onto this, where this problem comes from, number one, and how people can kind of get past this thinking. Yeah, and I think I'm just going to be real direct all the listeners straight up front is if you only think you've got five hours to delegate, you're not trying hard enough. You really aren't. Because I think too often these days we get caught up in being busy. And so we think that the busyness is important. Yet in actual fact, a lot of the tasks that are causing the busyness are either either not necessary or, or not of high priority and can be done by somebody else. They need to get done, but they can easily be done by somebody else. And in our shows around mindset that we did uh, early on, I think that it explains a lot around this. But I think on, honestly, for, if you if you only believe you've got five hours a week, and that's at any phase of business, and I've coached businesses from from startup to to you know fifty fifty five million dollar turnover businesses. So I've seen the whole gamut. And, and the reality is, even in startup mode, you can easily delegate a minimum of 20 hours, which gives you time to focus on the most important. And, and also, it's what I phrase as the genius tasks. And the genius tasks being those that you love doing, that you're really good at, but have a, a positive financial return to you and the business. Well, you know, Matt, because this is interesting, because when, when this question comes into us, I, I'm glad you said it, because... I often feel like, well, really, you know, I just don't think you're committing enough to the business if you're thinking that you only have five hours a week. And I'll tell you why. When I first started my first business, like from day one, I hired a full-time VA because I knew that I wanted to be out speaking, networking, talking to people, and I needed somebody there all the time to be managing my website, getting my content up. Like all, all I was doing was producing content, a bit like what we do here. And my VA was doing a full-time job in the back end, keeping the social media alive, keeping the whole presence alive. And I definitely got business out of that because my online presence was so heavy and it was so good. So I do find that difficult to understand. If you're, We have plenty of startups that come to Virtual Angel Hub and hire VAs full-time straight away because they're focusing on scaling their startup from day one. So it is a mind, big, big mindset issue there. I mean, how do you get people around that? Well, I think first and foremost, it's starting to get clear on what you're doing. And, and, um, and we're going to do a show on this, um, which is the, the book that I've just released, The Stop Doing List. But if you go to stopdoing.com.au, there's a free tool that associates with the book that helps you actually step through this. The only way to really start to understand what to delegate is you need to know where you're spending your time. And so what I recommend is that you firstly start with doing a two-week time audit 
which is literally just writing down what you do in a day. What you'll find straight away is there's, number one, a whole lot of distraction in your days, often. And secondly, is though that there's, there's plenty of things you could get a, a virtual assistant to do. Um, from there, you just need, you need to start to work through that process of um, you know, getting clarity on the task, understanding whether there's a system for the task, but also how long the task takes. And I think that's a really interesting um, piece there. Uh, how long the task takes and the frequency, because a lot of t daily tasks, repetitive tasks can be, can be uh, delegated to a virtual assistant. And, and if you think about it, you only need to have, you know, four 15 minute daily tasks and all of a sudden there's, fi there's your five hours. And if you can't find four 15 minute daily tasks at, you know, or, or, or eight or 10 or 20 of those, again, like we said earlier, I don't think you're trying hard enough, but it's also understanding that your time is valuable, your time is worth money, your return on your time is better spent in other areas. And having a virtual assistant doing these things for you is going to be way more profitable for you in the long run. I just thought of something as you were talking there, Matt. It's almost like, you know, you mentioned all the things that we talk about on this show, which is systems and processes and sitting down for two weeks and doing a time audit on yourself. Now, so I was thinking to myself, I think what happens to a lot of people is that they immediately think, I don't have time for that. I just need a VA to take <laughs> this five hours off me. Because if you, for the stuff you're talking about requires somebody to take a little bit of responsibility and accountability for creating processes and moving to the next level, whatever that level might be, in the business. So I think what I would say to listeners out there is if you're feeling this right now, then you really need to think about, are you in business or have you just created a bit of a job for yourself that you think is a hobby, and that you think is a passion thing, but you're really driving yourself into the ground if you're doing it that way. And, I'm sure and, to, yeah, and, and to add to that, this, this is part of strategic thinking. And I think that, that in order to grow companies, more time needs to be strength, spent in strategic thinking. Um, it's that quadrant that uh, uh, Stephen Covey you know, calls the... Um, important not urgent i think it's quadrant two in his um in his time targets and a time log is never urgent it really isn't however it is such an amazingly simple tool that gives you such clarity and i i do this reg i actually did it for uh, an entire year every day every week of, of an entire year and my productivity and efficiency went through the roof because it's all the little things that you start to realize, oh, I could get this person to do that, I could get that person to do that. And it's just amazing, it really well, is. It actually happened to me recently because as a lot of the listeners would know, I had a baby last year. So my lovely little Ruby is now seven and a half months old. And I was tying myself in knots with this, um, a new lead gen project that we have running. And I really thought to myself, but really I'm the only person who can do that. And um, I was talking to a team member who's really keen to step up and do more with us. Uh, and I said, said, yeah, you know, I said to him, the only problem is I kind of have to do that job and I kind of have to do that. And then I thought to myself, a few days later, I thought, do I really? I had to ask myself this question. And I'm in this little small lead gen program at the moment that is actually taking me step by step through some stuff that we need to do. And I thought, well, why couldn't I have him do the program? and get him to step up into this program. And actually, if he wants to do more with us, let go of the reins and maybe just guide and mentor him through that process rather than me actually do it. So it's just, it is a mindset thing. And it's that, you know, just thinking, do I really need to be doing all this stuff? Or is it a mindset problem that I need to get over? But what I'm interested to ask you, Matt, so the time log thing, can you talk to me about the tool you have and how do you actually do this? Because I, I did that sort of mentally. I didn't actually do a time. Is there a is there a thing that you need to do in order to do a time log? Yeah. So in the in the download uh, that that's on the site, I've created a tool where you can. It actually it's an Excel form, and mm. you just literally keep the you from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, uh, in fifteen minute increments. What what are you doing? It's just at a high level. So I was doing emails. I was on a phone call. I was ch uh, surfing the net looking at Facebook, I was writing an article, I was in a meeting, whatever it might be. And you'll start to, uh, 
you'll start to actually see, um, uh, the, the thing I see when I'm sent these is two things. Number one is there's a lot of wasted time on unnecessary tasks that it, somebody could easily do. Second thing is that there's a lot of people don't have a good flow in their days. So they're jumping and, and changing from so many things. Whereas if they had a person that could take care of a lot of these little things for them, they would get into a better flow and be far more productive. I think as well with that, I mean, I love that idea because I know that a few years ago I was terrible for that chomping around, you know, multitasking, which is just a terrible way to do anything. Even if you think you're a good multitasker, it's just not a good way of doing anything. So I had to change to this energy batching idea, which is to say, for example, I will do all of my financially type stuff in the one batch. So if I have to do, um, and this is also stuff I probably should delegate. I'm just thinking as I'm talking about it, but you know, let's say I have to do a bit of, uh, you know, I've got to figure out some stuff in my accounts or I've got to do some affiliate commission payouts or something like that. I'll actually do all of those things on the one day because in that day I'm in that energy field mm. and it's better than I can't switch from that to writing a blog post, which I used to try and do. And I did it very badly. But I think what was interesting as you were just talking then, Barb, was that even in that starting to think about what you're doing, you're like, I should probably delegate that. And there's yeah. probably half a day's worth of work that somebody else could do, hence now that you only have to do half the work to get the same outcome. Well, I think, you know, and I want the listeners to do, this is a little trick I do with myself a lot. Every day, I actually say to myself, how can I stop doing, and actually it's funny that your book's called that, how can I stop doing this task, that task? And it's not because I'm that busy, I'll be honest with you. It's because I want to spend more time with my daughter. So I always think, how can I outsource more things or delegate more things in my business so that I can actually take on the job I really want to do right now, which is the mother job. I don't want to delegate that to a nanny and do everything else myself. I've actually made the decision that I would like to do more of the motherhood one and delegate more of the other stuff. So that's an interesting mindset shift that I've gone through. So let me, yeah, let me share a little bit of the tactics behind that. I remember um, we, um, I got the opportunity, I remember when I've hired uh, Vanessa who works with me, I said, if any of your friends are like you, want to work like you, you're amazing, let me know, um, there's always going to be an opportunity. And um, one of her friends became, you know, was looking for some work. I interviewed her, she was an amazing candidate. I was just about to go on leave for three weeks. And I'm like, this woman couldn't afford to not to wait three weeks to get a job. And she was, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna take her on. I took her on and I remember putting these two post-it notes on my computer screen. One post-it note said, what must I stop doing today? And the second said, what could I get Shahani to do today? Yeah, and that's it, really effective. And they were just staring at me all day all day so and you know and i do a bit of travel so i had i had the post notes on my my uh, office computer on my laptop so anytime i was in front of my computer these two post-it notes are staring at me and believe it before before i knew it and i, I didn't actually have a role for her at the time i just thought i i, I knew that i'm going to need someone in the near future she was a good candidate i'm going to take her on before i knew it and you we were talking about this before the show i had probably five, 10 hours of work initially, she, I needed to get the next person within three months because my focus was what do I need to stop doing now and what must, and what can I get Shahani to do right now? Well, that's interesting, Matt, actually, because this comes back to the strategic thinking thing again. So guys, the listeners, I just you know want to sort of highlight something that Matt talks about a lot in this show, and he's very good at this strategic thinking part of business, where if you're you just caught up in the day-to-day -day doing, you're never going to have a chance to be strategic. But if you know that you're launching something, you know, or you know this year's plan and you know what your 20, we're in 2017 right now, you know what your 2018 plan is, which I know in my business what way that's going over the next one, three and five years, what I want to achieve. And sometimes what happens to me is, you know, in our business, obviously, sometimes clients will have to for various reasons, they may have to, you know, cancel their account or they may have to pause their account because their own business needs change. And sometimes when a really good a really good person comes back into our pool, 
I'm faced with the decision of, oh, I, I, it wasn't in my plan yet, but that person is really good. And we invested a lot in training that person. They've just come off an amazing account that they learned amazing stuff. And I'm pushed into a position of going, I don't want to give them to another client because I want that person on my team. And all of a sudden I find I often get overstaffed very quickly. And for a month or two, they might actually not be doing much on a few research projects for me. But before I know it, my plans move closer and my business grows much faster because I have the resources in order to be able to push myself into, you know, up leveling quicker. So sometimes it can be a good thing, I think, to hire a little bit early when you know what your strategic plan is for the future. It's, a, it's, a, it's what we call yeah. as a positive stress. Yeah. It's a, you, you put the, the, the positive pressure on yourself to, to grow faster because you, you understand that with this person, you've now got this opportunity, but if you don't grow, that you're going to have to let them go. And then I have to, in my situation then, what happens to me is I have to let them go. Then my plans come to fruition and I want to do the things I want to do. Mm. And I have to bring in a new person who doesn't understand our brand, who doesn't, you know, I have to train. The, the training is much harder. Whereas if I have somebody already floating that's already been trained by Virtual Angel Hub, I just love to take them on my team. Because if we backed them in the first place to a client, why wouldn't I take them on? Exactly. exactly. You know, and sometimes I'll be honest with the listeners here. And there might be some listeners on this who've done this, sometimes our clients let very good VAs go because they can't make it work themselves. And then I take them on and my business explodes. So I want listeners to realize that sometimes this, this is actually a major mindset block with you as a business owner and not necessarily with the person that you have, you know, not being able to make it work. Absolutely. Mm. Now, one last thing I just want to say on this topic is I think one other thing that holds a lot of business owners back from delegating more is they go, if I could just get this five hours, then I then my day wouldn't be as busy. Rather than focusing on, if I can get rid of half of what I currently do, I can do more of the income producing or maybe the things that I love. So we're, we're constantly focusing on, okay, I just wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna overwork or burn out. Um, so I'll just get rid of this little bit and that way I can just keep the rest of this and it, it'll be nice and neat and tidy as opposed to actually thinking bigger here and going, if I can just wipe out 50% of what I currently do and have that go to somebody else that will probably do it better than you will anyway, then I can focus on the things that I love doing that tend to be more uh, income producing and, and I'm number one, so number one, you're making more money. Number two, you're happier in your business, not just because you're making more money, but because you're doing the things that you actually wanted to do when you set this business up in the first place. And also just an add on comment to that. Think about it from the VA's point of view or whoever it is that you're hiring. doesn't matter if they're a VA or wherever they are. If you're put yourself in their shoes, let's say they've got you for five hours a week and then they have this other massive contract that took them on for 40 hours a week. Where do you think their energy is going to be? Mm. So you, you think when I grow then because often clients would say to us, once I get going, I'd like to take them on full time. And I go, okay, so do you, do you think that VA is going to sit there with no income until you decide that you're ready to take them on? No, they're going to go and get another contract. So either we have to give it to them or they're going to go online and pick one up somewhere else. And with all due respect to the people who love their business and want five hours, that person is really not going to have their, their central focus and their main commitment is not really going to be to you because you're not really committing to them. Absolutely. So that, that's just my view. You know, you're not going to get the level that you'll get if you really commit to someone and bring them into your vision properly. And so, so just on the flip of that too, if mm. you're only looking for a, a few things that you want, want to have done, there's no reason why you couldn't have someone just, just take care of certain tasks on an ad hoc basis. So like I know with all of my slide presentations that I do for, uh, for my speaking gigs, I don't need yeah. someone full time on the books to be able to do that. So I have a, a, a regular contractor that I use on Upwork and he, we've, got a, we've got a pre agreed uh, price because I've been working with him for the last four years um, and, and it works for me. So that task doesn't need to consume somebody within my team. I can get a specialist to do that piece of work and th that, that works in that fashion. So I think just, just on the flip of all of this for a second, Mm. If it's specific specialist tasks, you may need something designed. You may need a PowerPoint presentation. You may need, you know, whatever those little sort of one-off type of things, 
again, these are things that you, you would normally sit there and probably do yourself. You know, I mean, put it, put it into perspective. Um, to, to do a full day presentation would probably take me a, a minimum of three to four days of sitting there and constructing it and putting it all together. Um, I can pay 48 cents a slide, have them produced, uh, animations done, and I get it back within 48 hours. And all I have to do is prov provide a mind map. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, so that's a great tip for those people who do just want to have that little, you know, ad hoc type stuff. But, but Matt, in, I think that, yeah. But in Go reality, on. just to, to back onto the, you know, every, I, I, my belief is that every business owner could have somebody doing a minimum, a minimum of 20 hours a week for them. And it, it is, it really is life changing, in my opinion. It really is. Well, I mean, I'll be honest with the listeners. People have often asked me, why do you not do, a pay-as-you-go service, why do you not do a smaller contract of less than 20 hours? I'll be brutally honest. We want clients who are committing to their business and committing to our business and our VAs. So we, we want long-term contracts for our, for our VAs, and that's the business that we're in. Everything outside of that, I feel, is you know you, like what you're doing. It's project, it's ad hoc, it's here and there. Yeah. So that's kind of why we don't do that, because we we just feel it's it's uh, businesses that are committing more heavily to their strategic direction that we're sort of uh, playing in that space. But I'll also That's add just one last thing to that, Bob. Ten, 10 hours, having someone just for 10 hours a week in that capacity, uh, it actually doesn't work. It, no. It, it actually does. So it's a, you actually end up, um, you end up, even if Barbara did offer that as a service, um, it, it doesn't work. And, that, and I remember we had the discussion about this in, in the in the infancy of Virtual Angel Hub, and we were like, it, it actually doesn't serve the business owner in the best. And I know that's one thing that Barb is extremely passionate about is providing the service that serves the business owner's best interests. And a, and a ten hour VA is actually not in anyone's best interest, in, in my opinion. No, and I'll tell you something. The other person it doesn't work for is the VA. If, if you think about it, if somebody wants a full-time job, a 40-hour-a-week job, which, you know, every VA that we have has the, has the right to have full-time income mm -hmm. with us, mm -hmm. we need to put them on four different contracts to get 10 hours each. And their mind is so scattered, it's very overwhelming for them. Yeah. And usually person, a person who buys 10 hours will try and overload that VA yeah, with a little yeah, bit yeah. more than 10 hours. <laughs> So we get very stressed out VAs that want to resign from the client and not from us. And I'll be open about that. that that's the reason. So it's twofold. It, it doesn't work for clients long term, even though they think it does. It doesn't work for the VAs and it causes enormous pressure on our team in Virtual Angel Hub. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we don't do it. So <laughs> there's. Yeah. I've just realized the answer to that whole question is, is um, I might even do a blog post on that because well, it's, that's, a, it's a lose, lose, lose strategy. Nobody wins in that yeah. strategy. So I guess in, 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 just, in just wrapping up for today, I think the most important message that Barbara and I really want you to understand today is that, that you, can, you can easily find tw at least 20 hours of work for a virtual assistant to do in your business. If you commit to it, if you focus on it, if you start to work through and understand, number one, where you're spending your time, number two, where your time is better spent, um, and number three, just having some prompts in front of you that remind you, okay, what could I get somebody else to do right now? What do I need to stop doing right now? And if you follow those those simple uh, simple little tips, as I said, before you know it, you, you'll, you'll, you'll jump from five hours a week to having a 40-hour a week person. You will, and go to stopdoing.com.au if you want that tool that actually helps you to, to take you through this process. It's a fantastic tool, so it's over on Matt's new website. And buy the book, stopdoingthis.com. Thanks. Stopdoing.com.au. Matt, thanks very much. That was great insights, and I know this is something a lot of particularly smaller businesses really struggle with, so I think it's a great, um, it's a great topic to help people get over that hurdle. I agree. I agree. And um, if you're enjoying the show, we'd love for you to leave a review um, and also share the show with others, but also write us an email and let us know if there's any other specific topics you'd like us to talk about. We're always looking to, uh, to ensure that the topics we present to you on this show are, are for the listeners. So if there's anything specific you'd like us to talk about, uh, please feel free to write it in. Uh, otherwise, Barbara, thank you once again. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. See you on the next show. See you then. Thank you for listening to The Virtual Success Show. If you found this show helpful, take a moment to share it with a friend so that we can all grow together.
Find out more about the inside scoop on outsourcing success by going to our website, virtualsuccessshow.com. Until next time, thanks for listening.